Hey, it's Mazzy here, and the jazz vinyl revival continues with Kraft, Concord's uh, label, Kraft Records, Kraft Music, announcing the revival of OJC's The Original Jazz Classics. So I need to give a shout out to Ken McAuliffe. Um, today's announcement is the return of OJC's Press by Kraft Recordings. I'll just read it here because I'm half asleep. <laughs> okay, wake up, wake up, Ken. Wake, wake up, Ken. But Ken, Ken broke the news. Uh, Ken is, I'll give you a link below to his channel. And several, another channel, too, we get, we'll get into in a minute. But um, Ken broke the news uh, the other day. And then right after that, I think around the same time, Kraft announced it officially that OJC's original jazz classics are going to be reissued. Now, they're starting small, and we'll see how this goes. But uh, going back to Ken a little bit, he's a, a jazz critic, a gear critic out of New York City, all their music too, but emphasizes on jazz. And he uh, broke this story, uh, possibly with the help of Kraft. It doesn't really matter, but he was first, so I want to give him a shout out. And then... Um, Subsequently, that evening, uh, the Jazz Bums, ragtag group of uh, uh, jazz fiends, fiends, friends, jazz fans, fiends, fans, new and old, uh, have a, a weekly live stream Fridays at 5 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Uh, East Coast. I'll put a link below. And they discussed it, uh, and they discussed it with Rob the Wax, and uh, they just talked about what we can expect, what they what their hopes are with Kraft. So I want to get into a little bit of the background of Kraft and uh, OJCs, mainly because I have a little bit of a very recent vested interest in here. A month ago, I sold 340 OJCs on my channel. And uh, those were OJCs from the Dizzy Collection. That is a synonym of this gentleman just south of me who has his collection. He had about 340 sealed and all in shrink copies. I kept about I don't know, a dozen or so myself that I pulled. I have about 50 already OJCs. Now, let me give you a little background on OJCs, and then we'll kind of talk about them and what we can hope from Kraft. And I hope Kraft's listening because uh, the Jazz Bums in their conversation last night, there were some interesting things that came up. And I think, um, you know, maybe Kraft doesn't need our peanut gallery uh, commenting on this, but I think they could listen to what's happening in jazz reissues today. So original jazz classics, OJC, started in 1982 out of Fantasy Records out of Berkeley, California. Now, they released about 850 jazz albums from 1982 through about 1991 or 92, give or take. They also had a smaller subdivision or a parallel division, OBCs, original blues classics and we haven't heard yet as far as i know at least i haven't heard if they're going to do any of the uh, blues uh, line as well and what was amazing about it it's an amazing catalog first of all fantasy over the years and in, in the early 70s fantasy records bought uh, prestige records and riverside records riverside from orrin keep news who moved from the east coast uh, to the west coast he's someone who started uh, really kind of discovered and produced uh, Bill Evans and, and worked with Thelonious Monk and all these great jazz artists. And I've said on my channel before, I was uh, fortunate enough in 77, 78, 79 to have a series of conversations with Orrin Keepnews. He did a, a jazz live show on KSAN Radio, the rock station, on Sunday afternoon, just before um, my girlfriend, Nancy Newhouse, who was on KSAN Saturday and Sunday nights, uh, and so I would kind of chat with him and his wife, uh, bring in the collection. And I was a 23-year-old young, you know, er, new into jazz throughout the 70s, seeing a lot of shows at the Keystone Corner. Some of these great artists, including uh, Bill Evans and, and Monk and, and, and many, many others. So it was, I didn't realize how important it was talking to Orrin Keep News. And I wish I had better memories of the specific conversations, but... He came out and he actually helped in some of the reissue programs uh, that Fantasy would do in the 70s and beyond. And OJC was a series of these labels that Fantasy owned. It was Prestige, Galaxy, Milestone, Riverside, Debut, Contemporary, Jazzland, and then later Pablo Records. Pablo 
uh, the Norman Grant's label that he uh, started in the 1970s with later recordings like Montreux Jazz Festival of Count Basie and Ella Fitzgerald and, and uh, Joe Pass and those beautiful, minimal black and white co co uh, record covers. Some people didn't like those covers. In the OJC versions, they would swap those covers out. So OJC was actually started as a budget label. Originally, they were $5.98 list price. You could get them a dollar or two less, depending on sales at the various discount record retailers. And then they went up to $6.98 list price. Now, in those days, list prices on new releases were about $8.98 to $9.98, give or take, depending on the release. So really, the OJCs were 2 to $3 less than everything else. They were considered a budget label. You know, jazz, in a way, is bigger now in terms of record sales than it was then with this revival. Here's one with Bobby Jaspar and um, Coltrane with Art Taylor, Paul Chambers. This is Interplay for Two Trumpets. Um, here's another one. This is John Coltrane setting the pace. They literally had the price on it, uh, $6.98 early again on the OB was $5.98. And that was a lot cheaper at that time. Remember, these sort of started crossing over the time when compact discs were coming out. So Kraft is starting out with two releases. They're starting out with uh, Miles Davis working, a great uh, issue on Prestige Records. That is one I don't have. I have a different comp of it, so I'm looking forward to that one myself. And then they're uh, releasing uh, Thelonious Monk with John Coltrane. Uh, that is one I do have in my collection in my OJC version of this. And these are all analog recordings for the most part back in the 80s. Uh, Phil Delancey ended up uh, doing a lot of the... Uh, of the cutting of these later, the mastering of these. And some of them at the very end uh, were digital, but even Phil uh, Lancey, Delancey says that he was doing analog cuts during the times when uh, they were actually issuing these on compact discs as well. What's really interesting about this is that Kraft Records is continuing this trend that a lot of other major labels and uh, sub-labels within the majors are bringing back catalogs themselves. Now, over the last few years, we go back uh, somewhat uh, to uh, classic records, reissuing a lot of uh, major and minor uh, jazz and rock and roll and classical records when the labels really didn't care about vinyl. Uh, then we had uh, Analog Productions do a wonderful series of prestige records that they're still putting out today for $40. And I think this is going to give them possibly a run. Maybe they're going to you know, lose their license finally. And uh, Chad Kasim will not be able to continue those $40 uh, prestige, which are really a sweet spot in terms of analog uh, releases. Really wonderful uh, jackets and pressings. And then some years ago, uh, we got Music Matters Jazz which uh, Ron Rombach and Joe Harley uh, put together to release audiophile pressings of uh, Blue Note records. And now we know that the labels are bringing things in-house. Three or four years ago, it started when Don was brought in Joe Harley from Music Matters Jazz to do the line of the Tone Poet. And that really set a standard. Beautiful covers, Kevin Gray mastered records, cut records, and just really a sweet spot there and of course there are classic records which are slightly less not the big fancy covers but wonderful pressings and um, all analog recordings so i think more and more labels are going to be pulling things in house like this as i said at the beginning of this we're in this really renaissance of a wonderful time of jazz revival of audiophile jazz records and most of them at a reasonable price slightly higher than the normal uh, record release, but at a sweet spot because of the quality, the upgrade in terms of the mastering, Kevin Gray or or um, other mastering engineers, and good cover art, good reproduction for the most part. Kraft has been doing an interesting series under a different name, not under the OGC name of those uh, Chet Baker records. They're doing a Sonny Rollins box, and they're doing these sort of special releases of maybe one, two, three records or four at a time. And now uh, this announcement of starting with the OJCs is pretty exciting for a lot of jazz fans. Let me just kind of uh, talk about this a little bit too. This is a book that came out in 1995. If you're listening, Craft, you need to repress this book. This came out in 1995 after OJC ended, and this goes through most of the catalog. Of course, we got, you know, a lot of wonderful Bill Evans work. Uh, here's a whole section of the Bill Evans release. Now we know 
that analog productions did that beautiful double 45 expensive 900 dollars box recently uh we think it's time for a, a great series of all these to come back in print of course everybody wants sunday at the village vanguard so we totally hope that'll come out eric dolphy quintet uh, this was uh, reissued by the prestige series on analog productions Kraft did put out out there a beautiful version of that so that's sort of a tease of what can happen this profiles artists the whole felonious monk series you know fantasy also had that a lot of latin music with cal jader uh, bolisette uh, they really had a, 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 a the pulse on the bay area music like that vince garaldi of course with peanuts and uh, Kraft just putting out right now this Vince Garaldi um, Black Orpheus, Impressions of Black Orpheus. So they're on this path. Obviously, there's all this great Coltrane stuff. They've done limited editions of these like uh, Lush Life and hopefully Soul Train will be one. So hopefully Kraft will continue with this. We don't know how many they're putting out. We've heard that there's 20 titles initially uh, coming out, but we haven't heard a release list we don't know what those 20, what what's making up those releases. Now, one thing that came up on that conversation, again, link below to the Jazz Bums and Ken McAuliffe. Uh, Jazz Bums, they brought up the idea of craft having a face. A face. Don't worry, I'm not volunteering to be that face. But I think these labels really need to put themselves out there in the YouTube world in the Instagram world and have some sort of face. I'm not quite sure how that will play out, but for instance, in the last year, this mobile fidelity debacle, there's no face to MoFi. They have a problem there in communicating and going to their audience. And I don't think that has really helped them a lot. What's great about when Don was, who is the face of Blue Note, he does videos, he comes out, he interviews his own artists. He puts his artists out there for people to talk to. He brought in Joe Harley to do the Tone Poets. Joe Harley has become the face. Literally, Joe Harley is tone, the Tone Poet. Um, even though they don't have someone to do the classics, he kind of represents, at least is the face for all those wonderful Blue Note issues. And I tell you, I'm sure these other labels are looking at sales of Tone Poets and, and how successful that series of records um, are. And the classics, the classics are the more, you know, known titles for the most part, uh, even though they're less. And the Tone Poets are sometimes a little more interesting titles that a lot of people don't know about with some exceptions thrown in. Joe Harley goes on various channels. He's been on my channel here. He gets interviewed by people. He's out there. He's spoken to Don Was on YouTube. Kraft would benefit to put themselves out there. And that discussion kind of went on a little bit uh, on the Jazz Bums video with the wax last night uh, that I watched. And I think they're totally spot on about that. They need to interact with the people on YouTube, the audience, the buyers, potential buyers. This excites people. I mean, it's not that we're shills for these labels. We want these records to come out. We want these reissues to come out. We love the Tone Poets. We love the Acoustic Sound Verve series. At least Chad is the face for some of those. Now, that's going to go away since these are going to be done in-house with um, by Kraft Records. So I think that is something that is, is sorely needed by Kraft. My opinion there and, and many other opinions there. We need to be able to ask the questions. You know, they can tease us with the releases. I mean, there look at literally, there are so many. These are the releases. Okay, these are compact discs. And the compact disc series goes to something like a thousand. Of course, this is not how many there are uh, totally. But McCoy Tyner, Ben Webster, Cal Jader, Oscar Peterson. Thelonious Monk. I mean, all these Thelonious Monk records, uh, some of them have been reissued by Acoustic Sounds in the Prestige series. Some of them have come out in various configurations. We got Charlie Mingus, some wonderful things. Mingus. We got the Modern Jazz Quartet, Django, which is a fabulous record. 
We got uh, Vince Guaraldi. As I said, we got those wonderful uh, Pablo records. Of course, Coltrane, the Miles Davis, relaxing, smoking, hipping, <laughs> jerking, all the um, the Miles uh, records that need to kind of be packaged. I wouldn't be surprised if they did a box set of those. So this video is just a, a little bit of announcement. If you didn't see Ken uh, McAuliffe's announcement or if you didn't see the Jazz Bums conversation. Now, okay, this I just want to shout out. This is one of my favorite. I got this uh, from the Dizzy Collection. This is Pink Anderson. And this is a, a very appropriate, the day I'm recording this, Pink Anderson was a blues artist. And he, Pink, this is where Pink Floyd got Pink for their name of this blues artist. And this is from the OBC. This is an original blues classic. Um, Cal Jader plays Mambo, that kind of cool vibe thing. I used to see him all over San Francisco in the 1970s. And I'm a fan of, of that kind of vibe music. Um, this is a fantastic Bobby Timmons uh, set. This needs to be reissued big time. Uh, this is, uh, he wrote Monin and That Dare. Uh, just a fantastic record. This hasn't been reissued as far as I know, except for OJCs. Um, now, the first OJCs had these tipped-on jackets. Later on, just had the tuck-around jackets. So they kind of did over the years as it continued, cheapen out a little bit. A lot of them, not all of them, had these poly in inside inner sleeves. And then they had paper on other, uh, other times at all. And of course, you know, Bill Evans. I mean, everyone is so into Bill Evans right now. I mean, there's a really a thirst for reasonably priced Bill Evans records. So wouldn't be surprised if maybe OJC does their version of that box set. I mean, I think that would be a great thing. The box set that Analog Productions did once their license runs out, uh, a lot of people uh, were turned off by the price of that box set and that they're double 45s. I think a box set of those Riverside Bill Evans records, 33 and a third, Kevin Gray cut. Oh man, that would be the sale of the year, the box set of the year. So thanks for watching. Again, go to those other channels. And I just wanted to echo and amplify um, great news. Jazz freaks, vinyl buyers who are into jazz. This is the golden era again. So thanks for watching again. And Mazzy loves you.